Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to GNR Central and today I want to talk about the interview that Axl Rose gave to Eddie Trunk back in 2011 on That Metal Show. It was the second interview he gave to Eddie Trunk. The first one was back in 2006 on his radio show and during that interview Axl made a pretty startling revelation that he shouldn't have been on the road with Guns N' Roses in 1991 when they were promoting the Illusions records and that his manager had booked the tour without his authorization and that Slash basically wanted to get the best of Axel. Here's the snippet of the interview where he brings it up. Operation time, because the thing about it is, say what you want about what time the band goes on, but when you go on, it's all on. And as we said, you're given your full three hours. There's not a lot of bands doing that right now. But but for you, Axel, what, what is the preparation like day of a show, like before you're getting ready to hit that stage in the time before you go on? Well, you know, not not complaining or to be a wuss or whatever. It's just a lot of times, day of show, for some reason, everything starts going wrong. People are, people are making mistakes that you have no idea. You're making mistakes, they're making mistakes, and nobody even knows why. You know, it's like things that, that you go, well, I should know this, you know? It's like, it's like everybody gets hit by ADD or whatever. And, uh, and so you're trying to sort through that and get yourself in the right headspace and physical, whatever that you gotta, you know, work through. It's more like sports, you know, and, and, and having to play the big game, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we're doing better, you know, as far as that goes. I mean, a lot of this goes way, way back, though, to 91, and where we were super late going on stage. And that really more has to do with, I should not have been on tour. I only went on tour because of three reasons. Uh, my manager had booked a tour without authorization. You know, he just booked a tour, and then I'm going to be sued for it. Uh, he was also telling me that if if Slash is, dies of heroin or whatever, it's my fault. And Slash pushing me, and I, I should not have agreed to that tour, but I didn't know how to get out of it after it was booked. And the only thing that started cutting down the uh, late times was when I realized it was really being hard on the crew. The, the band didn't care about me, so I wasn't that. My head wasn't about them. The, the public, had, like I said, was a different kind of violent crowd. There was a back and forth thing, whether they, they wanted you to succeed or tear you apart. Um, but the big thing was that the crew was having trouble that was really supportive of me, and they weren't getting enough sleep. And I didn't want anybody getting hurt. And once that happened, you know, we started, I started getting myself figuring out a way to get there sooner. But it was also about trying to get the album done, get the album out. You know, there was a, a lot to what was going on there. And then I just, I lived right behind my school and I couldn't make it to the class in grade school. You know? I had a job at the grocery store down the street and I'm running down the street with wet hair trying to tie my tie and a sandwich in one hand. I was going to say, has it been a lifelong thing yes, since you were a little kid? Yeah. It has been, right? Yeah, it's a comic. It's a comic too. <laughs> Now this, of course, was a much different sentiment than what Axel said in 1991 to Kurt Loder. And keep in mind that if even if he wasn't into the idea of touring, he still had to sell it because he wanted people to come to his shows. So here's a snippet of the Kurt Loder interview. Okay, how does it feel to be back on stage? You know? It feels great. It feels great. I mean, we've been you know planning, you know, this for ever since we started. We've been aiming at you know being. We wanted our our second major album, we wanted a headlining tour, yeah. you know, and to do it right. And it feels great. You know, we, we think we got all the pieces in the right place and we, the morale is really high. Yeah. And actually, now that we're starting the tour, everybody's going to be starting to get in more shape while we're playing yeah. and stuff. Brought a trainer and everything. And just into doing our job we've set out to do our whole <laughs> lives. So in 1992, Axel gave a pretty newsworthy interview to Rolling Stone. And during that Rolling Stone interview, he talked about his child abuse, but he also said some other things that maybe fans didn't pick up on. So the interviewer asked Axel, you told me recently that you hate performing, to which Axel said, I just think it's a really weird job. I'm not saying it's a bad job. I'm not saying it's a great job. But, you know, it's just the work that goes into it, into being athletic. I mean, do you want to go out every night and jump off like your car? 
and have to do that. It's like basically becomes your job. And that doesn't take away the sincerity or honesty of it, but it's a job. And sometimes I'd rather be doing something else. To which the interviewer said, you obviously have to be getting something out of it to keep doing it. What do you get out of it? And he said the release of energy, being able to express myself as I choose, there's certain pride in knowing that you've achieved what you came out to do. And sometimes there'll be a little flicker of communication between you and somebody that you never really communicated with. One night when I was bummed out, Matt Sorum came and basically put his arm around me and said, it's all right, man. Those little things are really special. And with the new band and the new people, it's the first time I've really felt at home. It used to be just the five of us against the world. Now we've brought some, now we basically brought some of the outside into the band. The first night we played with a new band, I was sitting at the piano during November rain, just looking at this and feeling glad I was part of this thing. And in 1992, Axel gave an interview to Rip Magazine where he was asked, I remember being backstage at San Diego and you were late. People were seriously tense. Half of the concern is the job and the job itself, but the other half is concerned for you. It's not a case of, oh my God, my check's going out the window. It's, is Axel all right? To which Axel said, I've never been in a position before where I've been responsible for the income and livelihood of at least 60 people, like a road crew and such, and that's hard for me to deal with. If we didn't have an album out right now, I wouldn't be on tour. I wouldn't have chosen to take on that particular responsibility at this time, but I didn't really have a choice, especially if I wanted to keep my career going. I would have liked to be in, you know, more together emotionally and mentally before this tour. And part of the job in being in Guns N' Roses is coming on stage and being superhuman. We've, we're supposed to rise above the energy in the crowd, rise above whatever bad may have happened that day, and rise above whatever is in your head, while at the same time trying to rise above the damage in your own life. When I say GNR is striving, or basically striving to rise above, I mean we're doing our best to survive, not like, hey, look at us, we're better than you. I don't mean rising above power hungry and vicious to people. We're trying to rise above and be healthy and secure with ourselves and trying to spread some of that around. That's what I'm working on. And then later on in the same interview, Axel was asked, do you take your therapist out on tour? To which he said, sometimes when I feel like I'm going to be really needing to do some work, if we weren't on tour, I would have concentrated harder on getting this uh, work finished and then gone out, but this was impossible. The albums needed to be worked. It's not so much because I wrote them, but I feel November Rain and Estranged have a chance of getting embedded into music culture. So I'm going to fight for them and seed with them as with as many people as possible. I get bummed when I hear a great track off of a record and the artist says, yeah, but the public wasn't into it. I'm like, what do you mean? The public wasn't into jungle either. And Axel shared the same kind of sentiments when he gave an interview to MTV in the summer of 92 when the band was on tour with Metallica at a stopover in Houston. Here's the clip. Guns N' Roses has spent the past 15 months on tour playing to sell out crowds and being involved in more than their fair share of controversy. For starters, the band had a little trouble with punctuality, sometimes showing up two hours late for a concert. Axel says it took him a while to get back into the grind of touring. It was a whole change of life. You know, realizing, okay, now we're out on tour, haven't toured, been sitting on my ass at home or whatever. I've been out, you know, running around and, and rocking out and had to basically, like, change my whole life in order to be able to keep doing this. And so, you know, you'd do a show and then you'd be shot, you know, where you'd be kind of, like, shot for three weeks. But no, you got a show tomorrow. So then it'd take, like, all these hours of preparation where now it doesn't take me near as long to be ready for right. a show. During the course of the tour, Axel has been involved in heavy-duty psychotherapy in an attempt to deal with the sexual abuse he suffered as a child, among other problems. Last year, I was doing extensive emotional work on myself so when i'd go out to do a show it'd be it, you know if, if something i was you know uncovering something in my unconscious mind or in my mind or whatever and kind of experiencing it it'd be really hard to go out and do the show where that took like a year to get things under control i'd come off stage and either get on the phone or have the person fly out personally and do four or five hours right after stage and be, you know where like someone goes like once a week to like work out their problems for like a half hour, an hour, and I was doing four or five hours a day, you know, like every day. Is it helping? You at the show tonight, it seems to be fine, I'm in a good mood now. Do you feel like your, your fans sort of are understanding you better or take your problems seriously? I think some people are understanding, but you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they want what they want, even if they, even if they understand. It's like, you know, if there's a problem on stage and you have to stop the show, they, they don't really care. 
at that point, you know, they're, they're still upset. They didn't get satiated. They came to see something, and, it, you know, there was technical difficulties. In, in and then in 2012, Axel gave an interview to USA Today where he brought up what happened during the Use Your Illusion tours and made some more eyebrow-raising comments. He talked about a songwriting slump. He said supermodel girlfriend Stephanie Seymour and original Guns guitarist Slash and bassist Duff McKagan, in his words, did more damage to my ability as a writer. To those three, it was all crap. It beat me down so much, and at the time of the Use Your Illusion tours, Slash and Duff said, you're an idiot and you're a loser. I didn't write for years. I felt I was hindered for a very long time. I was also trying to figure out what I wanted to say, when it's right to be venting, and when you're digging a bigger hole. The lyrics on Chinese took a long time. Fast forward now to 2013, and Axel once again shed light on why he shouldn't have been on the road in 1991. So he gave an interview to Adelaide Now over email, and one of the questions he was asked is, the books do cover you being late on stage with your former bandmates being unsure what the delay was. Any hints? To which Axel responded, in answering, I would like to say that I have no intention or desire to take shots at either the old band or anyone from any of our lineups. That said, to answer some questions factually and honestly, it may appear that way to some. Unfortunately, in my opinion, that's just the nature of the beast. I could choose to say nothing or comment, but I feel, one, these particular questions in the interview don't exactly deserve that response, and two, I have a right to have my side perspective and what not only, not only do I believe, but know the truth regarding several issues with old guns and our time together out there. He said the Illusions lineup comments that I've read in the media or Slash's book were, in my opinion, predominantly public gamesmanship, strategy, and politics on their part. Pretending to be unaware or innocent to the public has been a common deceptive tactic often used in regard to what was happening with the band and our relationship with one another. As I've said before, I shouldn't have been on tour when we started in 91. That had a lot to do with Alan Niven, our then manager, and Slash. In my opinion, Alan wanted money and Slash wanted the touring to get the better of me given my circumstances at the time. My safety and well-being were not of their concern. After the first few months, things got a little better, and primarily for not wanting the crew to be injured, for not having enough rest, but the damage, especially with the media, had been done. Those who wanted to throw stones have had ammo they've used for years, whether it's real, hyped, a non-issue, reasons beyond our control, justifiable reasons such as injuries or technical difficulties or just life. It doesn't seem and hasn't seemed to make a difference. He said, and all of these issues have been addressed previously elsewhere. Another issue has been that each time I have agreed to a tour, I've also had agreements on our show times and start times. Often in dealing with former managers and agents, these weren't reality. It's not something said or explained. It's a show day thing they do for their own reasons, which we'll get into a bit similarly with your next question. And often tours or dates are booked, often without me having formally given my consent or authorized them. That's pretty much how this business works. All of that said, I'm not a punctual type of person, never have been. I apologize to anyone I've inconvenienced or put out in, the, in any way. And for those who have felt they've lost money with my cancellations in per in the past, perhaps you'll find some comfort in that I'm sure I've lost tens of thousands, if not millions, more, especially in the long run. In general, I usually don't really go by or live by a clock, and outside of touring, I don't really ask anyone else to. It's not out of lack of respect for anyone or intentional. I, I can say that I haven't been late because I was watching a sporting event or something equally as ridiculous. The reasons have all been in one way or another show-related or having to do with those involved with the show in some fashion. It's just my reality and I try and work on it. It's been getting better with our tours, especially over the last three years. In a concerted effort to make things up to our fans, friends, and associates, we've gone back to various cities where things have basically in the past gotten complicated, such as Vancouver, Montreal, Atlanta, Indianapolis, Philadelphia, and Dublin, and had a extremely successful shows without incident so that does it for this episode guys thanks for watching be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and go check us out at gnrcentral.com for the latest guns and roses news sticker hey this is dizzy reed from guns and roses and you're watching gnr central